How to decide whether to shave, pluck, or wax. If a recent glance in the mirror has revealed horror-level hairiness, this guide will help you get ready for swimsuit season without a silver bullet. You will need a budget, foresight, and honesty. Step 1. Consider your budget. Shaving is the least expensive option, while a salon visit for a wax can cost between $30 and $100. If you're bashful about bearing your body, you might feel more comfortable shaving at home. Having a body wax at a salon is best for those that have no problem bearing at all. Step 2. Plan your hair removal ahead of time. Shaving lasts for just a few days, while waxing and plucking will leave you fuzz-free for several weeks. Step 3. Assess your pain threshold. Everyone is different, but waxing and plucking make most people wince, especially the first time. Shaving is the least painful treatment, but can lead to nicks, cuts, and the dreaded razor burn if not done properly. Step 4. Save plucking for small areas with few hairs, like the brow or upper lip. Shaving and waxing are best for the legs, arms, and the chest. Now, admire your smooth skin. Did you know hypertrichosis, or werewolf syndrome, is characterized by excessive hair on the upper body and face and occurs in less than one in one billion births? How to avoid razor burn. Razor burn is very painful, but you can follow these simple steps to get a smooth shave without the irritating bumps and burn. You will need warm water, a washcloth, baby oil, shaving cream, a razor with multiple blades, a towel, and an aftershave cream or lotion or aloe vera gel. Optional, a shaving cream warmer. Step one, splash warm water on the areas you will be shaving. Shaving while showering opens pores and hair follicles, lessening the chance of razor burn. Step two, soak the washcloth in warm water, wring out any excess, and then add a few drops of baby oil to the center of the cloth. Step three, Condition your skin by wiping it with a prepared washcloth. Step four, apply shaving cream to your skin. Warm shaving cream can help reduce razor burn. Step five, shave with a fresh razor blade to reduce abrasions and nicks. Use short strokes with minimal pressure, shave in the direction of hair growth, and rinse the blade between each stroke. Try not to go over the area over and over. Step six, Rinse oil and cream from your skin using cold water and then pat dry. Step 7. Soothe your shaved skin with aftershave cream or lotion or aloe vera gel. Did you know? Archaeologists have found solid gold and copper razors in Egyptian tombs from the 4th millennium BCE. How to get rid of razor bumps. Razor bumps are the irritating and sometimes painful skin condition that can result from shaving, but there are ways to get rid of this painful and unsightly skin rash. You will need an aftershave product containing lidocaine, a bacitracin-based ointment or diaper rash cream, and soft clothes. Optional, germicidal soap and a sterilized needle. Step 1. Shave any area of your skin that is affected by razor bumps as rarely as possible. Continuing to shave on your affected skin will only cause further irritation and possible infection. Step 2. Keep the affected area clean and germ-free. Consider replacing your regular soap with a germicidal soap. Step 3. Discontinue use of lotions, creams, or astringents that contain alcohol, which irritates and burns the affected skin. Step 4. Apply an aftershave product containing lidocaine to soothe the affected area and promote healing. Use a sterilized needle to gently release the embedded hair shaft in each bump. Apply a bacitracin-based ointment to prevent infection. Step 5. Apply a bacitracin-based ointment such as neosporin or any diaper rash cream. This will prevent infection and promote faster healing. Step 6. Wear soft, gentle clothing until the affected area is healed to avoid friction and further irritation. Did you know? The condition of a woman having excessive body hair is called hirsutism. How to manscape. You can't be a metrosexual unless you know how to manscape. That is, remove body hair from your chest and back. You will need a method of hair removal, a manicurist pedicurist, nose clippers, tweezers, and moisturizer. Optional, stoicism. Step 1. Consider your hair removal options. Choices include shaving, depilatories, waxing, electrolysis, and laser hair removal. The last two are the most expensive. Step 2. Consider shaving, which is the least complicated method. If you don't want to use a razor, use electric hair clippers. Start on a long setting and go shorter until you're satisfied. If you're using a razor, use shaving cream to reduce cuts and avoid razor burn. Step 3. 
consider depilatories, which are hair removal creams that are applied to the skin. When they're wiped off, the hair comes off too. Using them is almost as easy as shaving, and the hair doesn't grow back as quickly. Step 4. Ponder your tolerance for pain. If you think you can stand having hot wax poured on your body and then ripped off in paper strips, this option offers smooth results that last four to six weeks. Step five. If you have several thousand dollars to spend on permanent hair removal, compare and contrast electrolysis with its modern cousin, laser hair removal. Electrolysis requires dozens of sessions, while laser removal can be done in six or fewer. Dark-haired men do better with laser hair removal than blondes. Step six. Now that you no longer look like you're wearing a sweater made of pubic hair, address other unsightly areas. Wax that unibrow and trim those nose hairs. Step seven, complete your sleek new look by getting your fingernails and toenails buffed, shaped, and shined. Step eight, keep your new hairless skin smooth as a baby's behind with daily moisturizing. Did you know, if men could change one thing about their bodies, 54.9% would choose less body hair, according to a survey. How to wax at home. Stray hairs, unibrows, swimsuit season, and hot dates are all good reasons to do a bit of extra grooming. Get rid of those unsightly hairs without going to an expensive salon. You will need exfoliating gloves or a loofah, a towel, rubbing alcohol, talcum powder or baby powder, hot wax or pre-waxed strips, and aloe vera lotion. If you are using hot wax, be careful to heat it according to the directions. It is easy to overheat the wax and cause burns and blistering. Step one, use exfoliating gloves or a loofah while you shower to exfoliate the area you will be waxing. Step two, dry the area you will be waxing and swab the area with rubbing alcohol to remove bacteria and skin oils. Step three, dust the area with talcum or baby powder to absorb any remaining moisture. Step four, Prepare and apply the wax or wax strips as directed by the package instructions. Weigh your options carefully. Cold wax strips are less effective, but hot wax is messier. Step five, hold the skin taut and rip away the wax or strip at a 40 degree angle as quickly as possible. Remove it in the direction of hair growth. Removing the wax or strip slowly or at a different angle will be painful. Step six, Continue to remove the hair until you have reached the desired effect. Redness is common after waxing. Wax at least 24 hours before you show your new smooth skin. Step seven, treat the area with aloe vera lotion to soothe irritation and remove redness. Did you know? Ancient Egyptian priests were required to shave their entire bodies, including their eyebrows, to keep away lice and promote cleanliness for conducting rituals. How to wax your back. Tired of being called Sasquatch? You can defur yourself with a little help from a friend. You will need a very, very good friend, a topical analgesic, a home waxing kit with a waxing stick and muslin strips, a lotion containing salicylic acid, and some tolerance for pain. Never wax immediately after sunbathing or tanning at a salon. UV exposure harms the skin and waxing can result in bruises and excess pain. Step one. Make sure the hair is dry and at least a quarter inch long so it can adhere to the wax. Step two, have your friend apply a topical analgesic to your back to desensitize the skin, lessening the sting. Make sure the analgesic has completely dried before applying the wax. Step three, heat the wax according to label instructions. The temperature should be warm but shouldn't burn you. Step four, have your friend use a waxing stick to apply the wax to a small section of your back. They should spread the wax in the direction of your back's hair growth. Step 5. Have your friend press a muslin strip into the section while the wax is still hot, leaving a half inch of the muslin strip free to grasp when removing hair. They should stroke the strip two or three times in the direction of hair growth. Step 6. Have your friend quickly peel the strip back in one swift motion in the opposite direction of hair growth. Pull the strip close to the skin as possible. Don't pull straight up, which is more painful and not as effective at removing hair. Step 7. Your friend should continue to wax the hair in small sections until it's all gone. Step 8. Apply a lotion containing salicylic acid to avoid ingrown hairs. Now take your friend to lunch to show them your appreciation while you show off your sleek back. Did you know, actor Steve Carell's body wax scene in The 40-Year-Old Virgin was real and filmed in one take. How to shave your face. Should you skip shaving and save yourself from potential razor burn? Or should you get a nice close shave and save a loved one from certain whisker burn? 
Learn to shave correctly and you'll solve this burning question to everyone's satisfaction. You will need warm water, a razor, shaving cream, a mirror, a sink or basin, cool water, a towel, and the aftershave lotion or moisturizer of your choice. Optional, a washcloth, a styptic pencil, and some tissue or toilet paper. Step one, fill your sink or basin halfway with warm water. Step two, wet a washcloth with warm water and hold it to your face for a few minutes to soften the hair and open up your skin's pores. If you don't have a few minutes to spare, just wet your face directly with warm water. It's better than nothing. Step three, check to see if the blade on your razor is fresh. If not, replace it. Shaving with a dull blade increases your chances of cutting yourself. Step four, squirt a small amount of shaving cream into your palm and using the fingers of your other hand, spread it evenly over your stubble. Watch what you're doing in the mirror. Step five, concentrating on one side of your face, start near your sideburns and slowly drag the razor downward in the direction your facial hair grows. Use light but firm pressure. Shaving against the natural direction of your facial hair can cause razor burn and ingrown hairs. Step six, after every few strokes, rinse off your blade in the sink to keep it from getting clogged with hair. Continue shaving, and when you've finished one side from your ear to your jawline, move to the other side of your face. Step seven, when you've finished both sides, tackle the trickier spots, your chin and neck. Shave more slowly and carefully in these areas, stretching your skin with one hand while shaving with the other. If you cut yourself, use a styptic pencil to stop the bleeding. If you don't have one, press a small piece of tissue or toilet paper onto the cut. Step eight, shave the remaining areas above and below your lips. For a closer shave, contort your mouth as needed. Step nine, check to see if you've missed any spots in your face, especially just under your jawline. If so, go back and shave them. You may want to reapply some shaving cream. Step 10, rinse your face with cool water and remove any remaining shaving cream then pat your face dry with a towel. Step 11, apply aftershave or moisturizer to revitalize your traumatized skin. Now go get them, handsome. Did you know? Some cave paintings depict ancient man removing facial hair by using two seashells as tweezers.